In this video, I'll be reviewing the basics on how to get your Unity project to run as a custom Gamelift server. Gamelift for Unity comes in two flavors, real-time and custom. I've covered the real-time basics already in another video, so if you're interested, go check it out. Gamelift Custom Servers is an option that allows you to take a whole Unity project and upload it as your game's backend server. So if you need a more substantial backend, like to simulate physical interactions for your game, then this may be the right option for you. We'll be covering how to enable the AWS Gamelift Managed Server SDK in your Unity project, add the minimum server lifecycle code, then create a server build with the project and upload it to Gamelift, and then finally create a fleet from your build. After that point, your Unity server will be ready to accept commands to create a game session and add players. I'll review how to do that in a follow-up video. So this is basically the hello world of custom Unity Gamelift servers. Okay, to start out, head over to the Gamelift Getting Started page and grab the Gamelift Managed Servers SDK. Extract the zip files and drill down to the Gamelift C Sharp Server SDK folder and open the .sln project. If you follow along in the README within the same folder, it pretty much tells us what to do. So go ahead and build the project to get our driver files. Once complete, drill down to the net45 bin debug folder and you'll find the required DLLs. Select and drag all of those over into your Unity Project's plugin folder. Next, let's create two scripts, a startup script and a gameless server one. Then create an empty object in Unity and add both scripts to the object. The goal here is to make sure these scripts are called when the Unity server starts. We're not going to do much with the startup script in this video because I don't have much configuration, but we'll cover that more in a later demo. Now grab the example lifecycle code from the readme and paste that into your Gamelift server script. The start method will be called at server startup, which hits this init SDK function. This function is important to call as the server won't start properly without it. If that goes well, then we create this process parameters object that initializes the lifecycle code. The activate game session is hit when Gamelift receives a request to create a new game session. I'll be reviewing how to kick that off from a Unity client in a follow up video. Then you have your update game session for any updates that need to be performed on the game session, the process ending code so any actions when the server is shutting down can be called from here, and then a health check block and finally the location of the log files you'd like to capture at the end of the game. This can be helpful if you have logs that you'd like to retrieve before the server shuts down. So if everything went well, the process ready call to the Gameless Server API will mark your server status to active, which means we can now accept and create incoming game sessions. So now our code to get our Gameless Server to active is ready. Let's create a server build. Back in the Unity editor, open the build settings dialog. Select Linux for target platform and x86-64 for the architecture. Make sure to create and select a new folder to contain the build files. I usually create a distribution folder in my project, then just add a new subfolder for each build. And also, add that folder to your .gitignore so you're not committing builds. In a terminal window, go to the build location and run the AWS GameLift upload build command. This command can be found in the docs and also right on the AWS Gamelift console page for builds. Give it a name, build version, directory of where the build is, which in our case is the current directory, operating system is Amazon Linux, and then whatever region you're working in. Once it's successfully uploaded, go to the builds page in the AWS console. And by the way, there's the upload build commands at the top. Select your build and hit create fleet from build. Name it. And for the server type, you can leave the default one selected as it's in the free tier and we don't need anything crazy for this basic example. For the server allocation section, you can provide as many scripts that you'd like to run on server start. So if you had an initialization script or something, you could add that here along with launch parameters as needed. For now, let's just grab the game server executable name, paste it in there, and hit the check mark at the end of the row. At that point, we're ready to hit initialize fleet. So now just monitor the events tab. Your server is ready when you see the status update to active. 
And please note, you'll see several log messages come in here over a few minutes, but when it hits the activating status, it sits there for about five minutes before changing to active. If say 10 minutes goes by and it's still stuck in activating, something's probably gone wrong and your server build is probably broken. Unfortunately, I haven't found a good way to debug this yet, as you can't even SSH to an instance to investigate. So as a word of caution, when starting out, make your server really basic, like in this example, and make sure that it works first before making any additional major changes. Once active, you'll also see the active instances go to one. So now you have an active GameLift server that's ready to accept new game sessions. In a follow-up video, I'll show you how to connect to the server and create game sessions. Once created, you'll be able to view them under the Game Sessions tab seen here. And as a final note, if you're just learning and playing around with GameLift, make sure to scale down your desired instance count to zero when you're done. AWS bills you based on how many hours the server runs, so you can still have an active fleet, it just won't have any active servers billing you. Then when you're ready to test again, just set the desired count back to one. And that completes the basics for how to get your Unity project to run as a custom GameLift server. Thanks for watching.